Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tatiana. I'm a business coach and mentor for women wanting to start their own stationary businesses. So welcome. I'm so excited you're here. I am really excited for today's video, which I feel like I say all the time, but really because I know this is a really big question that people are probably thinking, especially if you've been subscribed to this channel for any length of time, you may have thought to yourself, wow, can I actually make this thing by hand? So we're gonna be talking about that today. And actually, because I did mention that, if you are not subscribed to my channel and you love all things entrepreneurship, stationary businesses, planners, journals, life, motherhood, that is what you're gonna find here. I love to to really just inspire women to go for what they want in their lives and I would love for you to be a part of the family. So today I'm going to be sharing three pros and three cons on all things handmade and I also wanted to let you know I have created a really fun guide for this. It's called the Handmade Evaluation Guide. So if you look down in the description below, go ahead and click that link, put in your name, your email address, and right away you will get this guide. It's gonna really walk you through even more in depth what we're gonna talk about today so that you can personally decide if handmade is for you because I make all of these different videos but sometimes we never really have opportunity to apply it to our unique situation. So that guide is gonna really give you all of the questions you're wanting to know as far as, um, you know, is this gonna work based off of the style of planner or journal you're trying to create? Is this gonna work based off of maybe in your head what you're thinking you need versus what you actually need is this the route for you as far as you know like your budget do you really desire to do it and things like that so definitely make sure you click on that get that guide and I promise you it's gonna give you so much more clarity around this process as well for the last two years I've actually been creating my very own handmade planner it's hardcover it's wire o binded it's beautiful it's very quality I've had about three runs of the planner and through this time I've really learned not even just from that I've been doing hand made for years since I started my business. I've handmade so many items. So I really have a pretty good idea of what it really entails to have a handmade business. And so today I wanted to talk about the pros and the cons of figuring out, okay, is handmade for me? Maybe is this doing too much? Or maybe you'll realize like, oh, maybe this is actually doable. So let's get right into this. All right, so pro number one for me would definitely have to be, and these are in no particular order, but I would have to say that you have the creative freedom to do whatever it is that you wanna do. And this is one of the beautiful parts about doing things by hand. So first of all, I wanna just say, anytime that I'm making it like, oh, you can only do this by hand, there's always an alternative, especially if you do take the manufacturer route. I have products within my shop that are also manufactured by other companies as well. There's definitely a time and a place for where one makes sense over the other, and so I I'm specifically just speaking to the pros and the cons of the handmade process. So I just wanted to point that out. If I'm saying one thing or another for handmade, I don't want you to think like that means that it's not the case for if you were to get it manufactured, but I wanted to make that known. So when I'm saying creative freedom, what I'm really meaning is that typically what I've noticed whenever I do try to go and work with a company, whether they're here in the US or they're overseas or whatever the case may be, versus when I'm making something myself, a lot of times when you come to a company, they're gonna tell you, hey, this is our list of services. This is our list of binding options we have for you. This is the type of paper that we offer. Um, so you're gonna basically be picking from what they've selected that works best for their business. So when you are making things by hand, it really opens up a whole nother world because now you can source your own products. You're not limited to just a few options. You are literally open to whatever it is that you wanna do. So let's say if you wanna get a fun color spiral, you know, for your planner, instead of getting white or black, now you have that option. Or if you want to do this type of hardcover and you wanna have corners on it, but maybe the company doesn't offer that, well, now you can do that. And so so it really, again, it really will depend on, of course, if you did work with the company, what they offered. But what I really love about the handmade process is that you just, the sky is the limit with the creativity, what you can do. And I think that that's what makes it so special. And another really good benefit about this as well, because you have a lot of creative freedom, let's say you want to create customized products. So if you want to have a option where your customers can get their name on their cover of their journal or something like that, that might not be as realistic if you're working with a company where you might be getting tons and tons of inventory versus if you're making it yourself by home, it's more made to order and you can change things up. So that's really nice as well. Again, you just have that freedom to 
offer a lot more variety and just different options. But of course, on the flip side, the con to this is that for some people, and even for me in some cases, it can be overwhelming. And that's because you have so many options you can choose from. There's so many things you can offer. And sometimes it can be like, okay, where do I even begin? What do I really wanna do? Because there is so much out there. I remember when I was looking at what I wanted to do with my planner, I initially had a whole different idea of how I wanted my planner to look. And I'm actually gonna be filming a story time video really soon on just that whole journey if you guys are interested. So I'll get more in depth with it at that point. But the main thing is I ended up having to change my original idea of how I wanted it to look simply because I started to think about first, I was kind of trying to source it overseas. And then I started thinking like, wait, I really do want to um, have it customized. But then I was like, okay, well now how am I gonna make this thing? And then I was like, but I really still want it to be very high quality. So I was like, let me do hardcover versus um, maybe laminating it just to see how that goes. And then I had to figure out what coil I wanted. And then I needed to make sure that the machine I had would work which was the cinch um and then i was like okay does the printer i have is it going to be good enough to print out these covers i'm trying to make like there was so many decisions and so i think the biggest thing i'm saying is that with the pro of having all the creative freedom the con is that it can sometimes almost be a lot of decisions to where it might kind of scare you off but the biggest thing i would say for this is to definitely find someone find a mentor for example or just someone or something to follow I think the biggest thing where we can get really caught up and overwhelmed is when we're listening to too many different people, looking at too many different sources, and then it makes it hard for you to know which route that you wanna take. So once you kind of find that person or that thing or that resource or whatever that's kind of giving you the steps, follow that and it'll make it easier. If you have kind of like a dream idea of what you want your planner to look like or your journal to be, don't start then going over here and getting off task looking at all these other ideas because all it's gonna do is kind of cloud your judgment from what you're really wanting to do. So the biggest thing is to kind of find that one thing to focus on, find that one source, the one mentor or whatever, and then use that to really see you through the process. And that will help with that kind of overwhelm. So another pro to doing handmade is that you can make real time changes. And this is something to me that is just, it's, it's kind of beautiful. I don't know, it's kind of beautiful because let's just say for example, you have already finalized everything, you've made your sample, you've even started shipping a few planners out and you're sitting down one day, you happen to be flipping through because most of us, we are our designer, we are our editor, we are the shipping out person, we are the customer service person, and we do everything, right? So when that's the case, it's like, okay, you may miss some things, we're human. So let's say you're sitting down because things like this have happened to me, you're sitting down and you just happen to be flipping through your journal that you, you know, you're so proud of and everything. And you notice like, oh my gosh, the spacing is off on this. How did this happen? How did I miss this? Or, um, oh, these boxes are not lined up like they're supposed to be. Just, you know, little design things. And so when you are the person that is creating this, you now can go in in real time and you can go in, you can make that update and literally the next person that orders that product will get that change. And so sometimes it may not even be anything to where any other customers that maybe have already received it would even notice. It might just be something simply that you didn't realize and that you're able to change. So I think that's what's really cool about it. Now, of course, if it's something like really crazy and it was like a huge mistake that's like hindering people being able to use it, that's definitely a little bit different, but if it's just, you know, little things that you've noticed or if you start to notice like, okay, I was doing this this way, but this is actually a lot easier. I'm going to just change it up and start doing it this way. So sometimes, whereas the flip side of that is that if you are ordering from somewhere, you're working with a manufacturer and you get a hundred of something, well now you're not gonna be like, oh, okay, well I found this design mistake, so let me go ahead and submit this to them and have them send me another hundred. No, most of us are gonna get through that inventory we already have and then we will go ahead and make the change for the next run or the next bulk that we order. So that's just kind of a really cool um, pro as well. Now the con to this is that it can definitely be time consuming because since you are the middleman, you're making all of the decisions, you're making these changes in real time, of course it's naturally going to take away some of your time. And so I think out of all of the cons, this is definitely the one that you wanna reflect on kind of the most because it can make or break your decision if you really do want to invest this. And so the biggest thing I would say when it comes to time, I kind of look at it in two different ways. Um, it can be a con because 
Things are time consuming, especially when you are first getting started. So if you're going handmade, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be using a lot of new tools and equipment that you might not be very familiar with, that you've never seen or used before, and you don't even know where to begin with it. And so once you kind of get it, maybe you read the manual, you kind of play around with it a little bit. Now you start to get to like, okay, well maybe I'll make my first one or my tester or something like that. And that is to me, that is the most time consuming part of the process because if you are getting a brand new printer and you're trying to get the best color available from that printer you're going to probably print it normal and then you're going to click around on some buttons you're going to print it again and then you might try something else and you're going to print it again and you might be like oh what does it look like on this paper and all of those things you're going to go through that whole process of just trying to figure it out basically and so when that happens it takes up a lot of time but the beauty of it is once you do that then the next time you go back to do it again you don't have to do that process because you've already done the work you've already figured it out so initially when you get something new if you get a heavy duty paper cutter and you're like okay where do i even place this paper on this cutter to make sure that it's printing the right way you're getting that new printer and you're trying to get the settings right um you're getting your binding machine and you have no idea where the holes need to line up that first time that's going to be the most time consuming but then you're going to make your process efficient and so at that point it really just becomes okay Yes, I have to do this, but now I have everything marked out. Now I'm getting on to print something off. I'm just clicking a couple buttons because I already know my settings. And so yes, it's still time, but really the bulk of that time is in the beginning when you're trying to really figure it out. So you have to be open to trial and error. You have to be open to learning new things and just how they operate because that's really gonna set you up for success. But really once you figure those things out, and this is with so many things in my business, once you make those first decisions, those initial, just kind of not so fun moments where you're trying to figure it out once you get past that hump. So now your time is a lot more predictable and you're not going into it still trying to figure things out, which is definitely a lot better than going in and still having to troubleshoot. And when you think about it, time just in terms of like, once you finally figure out, you have to research everything. Once you kind of decide what you want to do as far as how you want the planner or journal to look, then you have to research it, figure out what's the best place to purchase the different things from. And then you have to wait on them to come to you, right? So there's a lot of just time invested. And so it's definitely something that you want to consider. Okay. Okay, so another pro to going the handmade route is that you can control the timeline. So I wanna tell you a little quick story about me. Um, again, I've been doing handmade for like six years now. And so when I knew that I wanted to do these planners, I was really adamant about outsourcing some part of the process because I was really trying to prepare for a lot of volume. I really wanted the planners to sell out and I didn't want me you know, like the slowing down of any part of my process or me not enjoying a certain part of the process to be the reason that I didn't give myself the ability to sell as many as possible. So I decided to outsource the printing and cutting portion of my planner. But with doing that, because like I said, you know, with the pro of handmade is that you control your timeline. So as soon as I outsourced that, it now was me relying on somebody else. I was no longer the middleman for this part. And now I'm waiting on someone to provide me with my printed pages cut down the size for me, which is really great because when I get it, it's always like, yes, this was worth it. But on the flip side of that, it's still a wait. And so this past time with the last run that I had, they had some issues due to just shortages, people not being available to work and just a lot of things. And so it ended up pushing me receiving my pages almost a month back. And y'all, that was frustrating. It was, it was very frustrating just because, I mean, naturally, it pushed everything back. I had to send out emails to customers. I had to push everything back. It moved my time of being able to take a break for the holidays closer to Christmas, which was not super fun. Um, but that is sometimes the reality of when you do pass things off to other people. And this can be for so many different things, even when it comes down to just if something's getting shipped to you, right? You know, we can't always 100% rely on when something is supposed to be delivered to us. And so at that point, you're kind of like crossing your fingers and hoping for the best, like, okay, I hope this gets here in the four business days that it's in or whatever the case is. And so just kind of keep that in mind that the pro can be that you are really creating the timeline. So you can decide if somebody places an order, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna go make this planner right now and I'm gonna get it out to them the same day or I'm gonna get it out to them tomorrow or whatever your timeline is, if you want to set it up, I always suggest setting up some type of processing timeline so then that way your customers are aware, especially if customization is involved or anything like that. But that is definitely a strong pro for going handmade. You really have the ability to truly 
just really you are you are in control of every part of the process. All right, and the last con that I have is that it's not necessarily the cheaper option. I think sometimes people just automatically assume that if you go handmade, it's cheap or it's not as good of quality or different things like that. But I know for me, it was really important that if I was going to do a handmade route and charge the amount I was gonna charge for my planner, that people needed to be receiving the best quality materials and just me putting my all into the process. And so I just wanna first of all, just shut that down that going handmade is not cheap. <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, when you think about the investment of the equipment that you are going to be purchasing, you're gonna be getting printers and possibly paper cutters, um, binding machines, binding, paper, um, potentially book board for hardcovers, paper, different types of paper which you're using. There's just a lot that goes into it. So first of all, you wanna make sure you have somewhere for all this stuff to even go, you know, in your house or wherever you're choosing to put these together. But outside of that, it's an investment. And so one thing I would recommend to kind of spin this con a little bit, um, because once you start seeing how much these things are, it can almost be sticker shock in a way, because you're like, whoa, I thought this was the more affordable route, right? Um, one thing that I did early on in my business was I am always big on working with what I have where I am. And so when I started the Stationary Muse, I decided, okay, I don't have a printer. I had one, but it was like half working and I didn't have a paper cutter. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot, but I knew that I had to get bubble mailers so that I could ship out my products. So I went ahead and invested in a little bit of some shipping stuff and I decided to use the printer at my job and they had a little paper cutter, like a trimmer at my job. And I literally used that for months until I saw that, first of all, it was something that I wanted to continue doing when I saw that it was something that was generating some income and I really saw that there was some potential. So then I slowly invested and I remember the first thing I got was the paper cutter because I wanted to be able to cut more pages at a time. I got a really heavy duty one. I ended up having quite an interesting um, thumb accident with that. But anyway, the point is that I slowly made the investments and then I believe it was several months later and then I got my laser printer and then so on and so on and so on. So don't feel like you need to get all of these things right in this moment in order to make it happen. Work with what you have. Look around with people you know. Um, somebody else might have one of these things that you need or at your job, you know, if they're kind of cool and flexible like mine was. Um, really think about that first before you feel like you need to cough up all of this money to do it um, because it can add up. And on top of that, that's just the equipment. You also have to purchase the paper and just the different things that kind of make the planner come to life. So the toner as well is very expensive, um, especially for a laser printer. So just things to consider, but always keep in mind that you don't have to get it all and you can really truly get creative and work with what you have around you. And also, just because I've been mentioning this a few times on the manufactured side of things, that can add up as well. Now, of course, you're not having to invest in all of this equipment and everything, which the equipment can continue to make you money over and over again, right? You can make lots of different products and items and things with it. But with going manufactured, you're really paying for your inventory. So you, depending on where everyone's going to have minimum quantities and depending on where you're getting it from, you might even have to pay additional fees plus shipping. Shipping can be very expensive depending on you know like how much it weighs or if there's just fees for it coming overseas if it's coming from air or by sea or you know whatever the case is and so that can add up as well so to me i feel like because people always ask me this all of the time well what's the more affordable route to go it's really hard to answer that. I don't just say that just because I'm like, oh, I don't want to answer it because you can work with me. Like, that's not why. It really is difficult to answer because every situation is unique. There's so many different options available. And so that's what really makes it hard to say like, oh, this is the more affordable route or oh, this is the best route for you. So that's why I encourage you to check out that evaluation guide, the handmade evaluation guide to just get a better idea of if handmade is even a good route for you. I think that's a great place to start. And just keep in mind, you know, just start putting your coins aside no matter what, because it's gonna be an investment, which will be worth it. If this is something you're dreaming about, it's something you've always wanted to do, it's gonna be worth it in the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was really fun to just share some pros and some cons about a process that is so dear to my heart. Um, I love making things by hand and I always just, it's so funny when people react and like, wait, you made that by hand? And it's, it's actually, it's a really good feeling because I feel like, oh yes, 
I did. It doesn't look like it, what? So I really wanted to make sure I share that with you guys. I'm gonna be sharing a lot more stuff around this topic coming up over the next couple of weeks to make sure that you are really set up and know for sure if this is process is gonna be for you. Comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.